Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Hashtag Education Station, your grade four to seven online resources for mathematics as well as English. So just before I get started with today's lesson, please consider subscribing by clicking on the link below. And uh, please hit the bell I uh, notification icon as well so that you can be notified when we do upload new videos. I'd also just like to inform you that the videos that we upload are there for, for revision purposes once teaching has taken place in class. So you're welcome once your teacher has done the teaching to come back to this resource. Go through it, stop it, pause it whenever you'd like to just so that you can revise that which you might not understand or that you just like to revise once you've completed the work that your teacher has given you. So today's lesson is about mathematics and it's grade seven fractions. It's the start of term two's work and it's just an introduction to look at what you should know and what you have done in prior grades. So if we go and look at the question, what do I remember about, about fractions? We should start thinking of the following concepts. We should start thinking about what a fraction is. We're going to also today look at these words, and that is, what is a fraction, as I've already mentioned? What's a proper fraction? What's a numerator? What's a denominator? What uh, is, is ascending and descending order and comparing, and in this case, as you see there, ordering or arranging fractions? What should I do when I am confronted with these questions? And uh, we're going to look at the first one today, which is, what is a fraction? So if I ask you, what is a fraction? I'm going to give you a second just in your mind to go through what is a fraction. So I hope you remember that a fraction, and this is important, is an equal part of a whole. Now that whole could be anything. I know your teachers could use pizzas, they could use a chocolate, which I'm going to use today as well as an example, because I like chocolates. But it is an equal part of a whole number. So if we go on and I say, okay, Let's have a look at this beautiful chocolate right here, which is nice, uh, been blingified by my daughter, thank you to you. Then um, I'm going to say, let's divide this chocolate into two equal parts. Now the question I have is, if I take a chocolate, the whole in this case, and divide it into two equal parts, what fraction am I working with? I hope you said halves. So let's take the chocolate, and we are now going to divide it into halves. So, I'm going to cut it over there, and I'm going to say, great, here we have two halves, this half is mine, and this half is yours. Do you think that's fair? Well, in this case, <laughs> I think it's fair because I get the bigger part, but no, it's not fair. It's important to remember the word you see on the screen, and that is, a fraction is an equal Part of a whole number. So if I would have to have div divided this chocolate into two equal parts, it should have been divided somewhere around the striped line that you see or sellotape that you see there. So let's look at the example of the circle we have here and of the chocolate at the bottom. And if we divide that into two equal parts, it should look like that. Now I'm going to ask you that's a whole and I've given you a half. So how would you represent a third in your mind? If you had to take this, how would that look? You got it? It's going to be that figure there divided into three equal parts. And so we can carry on when we get to a quarter. It is a, the same figure divided into four equal parts as well as a fifth. So that brings me to the next question. Can you remember what a proper fraction is? So I'll give you a second. Now a proper fraction is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So again, bell should be going off in your head. What's a numerator? What's a denominator? So can you remember what a numerator is and what a denominator is? So if I give you this one, a quarter, which one of these two is the numerator and which one of these two is the denominator? Can you remember? Great. I hope you said that the top one is the numerator. Now what does the numerator tell me? Can you remember? The numerator tells us how many equal parts we are working with or how many equal parts we have. Now in this case we only have one equal part in a quarter. 
So therefore, what does the denominator tell me? In this case, you should now know if the top one's the numerator, then the bottom one is the denominator. So what does the denominator tell me? Yes, I hope you remember as well. The denominator tells us how many equal parts the whole is divided in, in, into. So just remember the following as well. I know that many times when I go to my class and the kids say, but sir, a hundred is more than a quarter or a hundredth is more than a quarter. That is not the case when it gets to fractions. Please remember that the denominator and the larger the denominator is, the smaller the equal part becomes. So just imagine that chocolate you and I had a second ago. If this chocolate was divided into a hundred equal parts and you had to get a hundredth and I had to get a quarter, I'm pretty sure one quarter of a chocolate will be bigger than one hundredth of a chocolate. So remember, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the equal parts become. So let's have a look at this example on the screen. You've got a pizza over here and you've got one shaded part. So if I ask you to represent the following fraction as a proper fraction, what's your thought process going to be to be able to write that down? Now I hope you started thinking in one of the following ways. You can start with either the numerator or the denominator, but in this case I'm going to look at the denominator first. I'm going to say step one. How many equal parts is this circle, a pizza in this case, divided into? So if you go and count there, you should find that it is six. And then you're going to say, fine, I've now got the denominator. Step two will be how many of those pieces or slices are now shaded. In this case, you go and count them and you will see that one part is shaded. So now you can go and represent that figure as a proper fraction. So here we go. We've got our division line. So step one is count how many equal parts that whole is divided into and we find that it is six. And if we go and look at how many of those are shaded and that I physically have, which is the numerator, I have one sixth of that pizza, which will bring us to the next topic, which is ordering fractions. Now, boys and girls, ordering fractions in this case is not you climbing on your mobile phone on the McDonald's app and ordering yourself a set of fractions. Because that's going to be, depending on if you have a fifth of a burger, I mean, it's going to be a small piece of the burger. Ordering in this case is what? I'd like you to quickly think about that. Ordering, boys and girls, is when we arrange fractions in either ascending or descending order. So what does ascending and descending order mean again? Think about it. Ascending order, I hope you remember. Ascending order is from smallest to biggest. So if you think of a plane that's ascending, it's going up. So from smallest to biggest, which leaves us with descending. Now you should be able to work that out. Descending is therefore from the biggest to the smallest. Now let's have a look at this group of fractions I've given you here. And we're going to arrange them from smallest to biggest, which will be ascending order. Now what's your thought process? And that's what I'm interested in, your sequential processing. Which steps are you going to follow? In this case, it's easy because the denominator is all the same, which should also remind you now, okay, before I can order or compare fractions, the denominator should be the same. But in this case, it's not, uh, it's not necessary. We're going to do that in the next lesson when we look at equivalent fractions. Here, it's quite simple. So I'm going to go directly to the numerators and I'm going to say, fine, let's go through the numerators and see which one is the smallest. I've got six, I've got three, I've got nine, and I've got two and I hope when you get to two that you notice two is definitely the smallest because we can all count for ourselves so two tenths therefore comes first. I'm going to go back to the numerators and see okay I've got six, I've got three and I've got nine so which one of those is the smallest and I hope that you also see three tenths is the smallest in this case and therefore it would be the fraction written next. So now we're left with the last two and we've got 6 over 10 and we've got 9 over 10. And I'm going to say, great, 6 is smaller than 9, therefore 6 tenths is written next. And we're left with the last one, which is 9 tenths and 9 tenths 
is there for the last one in this sequence, which we have written in ascending order, smallest to biggest. Now we're going to look at comparing fractions. Now I know I've just said in the previous slide that you looked at, thing to remember is that when the denominators are not the same, you need to make the, de the denominators the same before you can order or compare them. But this is not the case when the numerator is 1. Correct. So when the numerator is 1, you've got one equal part of that whole. So if your teacher asks you a question in a questionnaire where it tells you arrange the following fractions in a, a descending or an ascending order and they all have a numerator of 1, it's pretty simple. It's like the first thing we did today when we looked at 1 tenth and when we looked at 1 fifth. It's easy to see which part would be bigger. So let's have a look at this. What does this mean when we have to compare fractions? Well, we're going to look at are the fractions bigger, smaller, or equal to. So I'm going to say here we've got two fractions. We've got one-tenth as well as one-fifth. So if you had to take the chocolate again, which we were looking at, and divide it into ten equal parts, and you had to take a chocolate divided into five equal parts, you can see by what I've just said as well that one tenth, the physical part or the equal part, is definitely smaller than one fifth's part. So one fifth is larger than one tenth. So let's go and apply that which we have just done over there or over here. Otherwise, if we go to comparing fractions, I'm now going to ask you fill in the correct relationship sign. So either bigger to, smaller to, or equals to. So let's have a look at the first example. We've got 15 over 100 and 60 over 100. Therefore, 15 hundredths and 60 hundredths. So let's take that chocolate you and I were talking about earlier. And we say that chocolate is divided into small parts of hundredths, therefore equal parts. And you've got 15 of those equal parts and I've got 60 of those equal parts. Which of the two is going to be larger? 15 hundredths or 60 hundredths? Now I hope you know that if the denominators are the same, 60 therefore is definitely bigger and more than 15. So I've got more of that chocolate than you have and therefore 60 over 100 is definitely larger than 15 over 100. Let's look at the next example. We've got the chocolates divided, wow, small pieces, into thousandths and you've got 550 thousandths and I've got 240 of those thousandths. So who's got more this, uh, in this case, you or me? I hope you said you. You've got 550 thousandths and I've only got 240 of those equal parts and therefore yours is definitely larger than mine in this case. So 550 thousandths is larger than than 240 thousandths. Now, boys and girls, this was only an introduction to grade 7, term 2, mathematics and fractions. So in the next one, we'll start looking at equivalent fractions and how to implement and use them, as well as how to convert fractions into equivalent fractions. So thank you so much for, uh, so much for watching. We'll see you next time and have a fantastic day.